Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I wanna to take you back to 162 years ago today, April 20th, 1861. Washington, D.C. is the scene. You have Baltimore to the north with pro-secession mobs who have the day before have attacked the 6th Massachusetts infantry as they came through town to reinforce Washington's defenses. Uh, south of Washington, you have Virginia, which is just weeks away from leaving the Union. In the middle of that, the nation's capital is rocked, concerned, nervous. President Lincoln, everyone else is worried. They are waiting desperately for troops to come from the northern states to reinforce the city and to help put down the rebellion. So on the heels of the 6th Massachusetts arriving yesterday, today you have another regiment that arrives in town, much to the relief of the Washingtonians. And that regiment is the first Rhode Island detached militia. They are not only welcome because of their numbers, they also come in with a bit of swagger. They've got some really distinctive uniforms, as you'll see by this picture uh, of Moses Brown Jenkins. He's wearing this wonderful uniform. That, by the way, is credited to none other than Ambrose E. Burnside, who was a resident of Rhode Island. When the war began, he becomes Colonel of the first, and of course goes on to a number of other large commands. And of course his career, his star rises, commander of the Army of the Potomac. And then of course, after Fredericksburg uh, goes downhill pretty darn quick. But in this moment, 1861, his star is on the rise and he comes in town with this whole regiment of guys who were wearing these bright blue pullover blouses, as you see here. Uh, they Again, they, they literally are blouses. They don't button all the way down. They just button halfway down so you slip them on. He, uh, The men are also wearing these gray trousers. They have these bold black dress hats. And to top it off, knapsacks, which you can see here. It's a scarlet covered knapsack trimmed in black. The men are carrying haversacks cream or white colored. In fact, Moses Brown Jenkins, he has his name uh, uh, written on stenciled on it. So imagine this whole regiment of guys, bright blue blouses, gray trousers, these black hats and these scarlet knapsacks. They come in town. They wow the crowds. Everybody is super excited to have them there. So that's, that's the scene. That's what's going on here in Washington. Um, 160 two years ago today. Let me tell you a little bit about Moses Brown Jenkins. He's 26 years old when he comes into Washington. And in some ways, he is representative of those first responders, right, who are making their way into town. But there's a couple ways in which he is rather atypical. One of those ways is that he's a super wealthy guy. His father had made it big in the textile industry, and he died before the war began. But that inheritance went to Jenkins and his family. And in fact, a week earlier, Fort Sumter happens, and Jenkins is getting ready to go on a tour with his family to Europe. In fact, he has just purchased tickets to make the crossing uh, uh, across the Atlantic on ship. And when he hears about Fort Sumter, he takes those tickets and he literally rips them into pieces. And he says, I'm not going to Europe. I am going to fight to preserve the union and democracy and freedom. And so he puts his suitcase aside. He grabs the knapsack and the uniform and takes off with his comrades for Washington. Now, the other thing that makes him unique is his religion, his faith. He's a Quaker. And as you know, Quakers, the friends, 
they were peace loving individuals. They did not want violence. And that was part of their teachings, part of their learnings. And so it must have been a very difficult decision for Jenkins to go against his upbringing, to go against his belief system and fight and go to war to support his country. So he did. So he's rich and he's a Quaker and he sort of sets that all aside to join the army. He does it. And the Rhode Islanders are in for a short enlistment. This is a three month enlistment. Many folks believed back at that time that it was going to be a short war. And so he serves out his three months. And at that point, he's done with the service and he doesn't he doesn't return. He instead returns to the family and returns to managing the very large inheritance and business holdings that he has, basically taking care of his family. So there you have it, the story of Moses Brown Jenkins, the first Rhode Island detached militia, their uniforms credited, the design of which is credited to Ambrose Burnside, and their timely arrival in Washington, D.C., 162 years ago today. We'll see you next time on Life on the Civil War Research Trail.